Yes, I'll ask the first question. Oh, good. Okay. Let's I'll go. start it off. Could you tell us, in all your years of dealing with government agencies, corruption, and things that you came across, what was one of the hardest decisions that you had to make regarding running a county or a city? When I came here, you had a 14-year sheriff by the name of Bud Purdy. Um, I fired him. <laughs> and uh, there were petitions being circulated uh, fire steer on and bring Purdy back, so on and so on. Um, when he held a press conference at his home in Miami Shores, he announced that I had not given him any reasons for firing him, which is not the truth. I gave him about 15 or 20 reasons why. Uh -huh. And uh, he also said that I was in favor of legalized marijuana, prostitution, and and gambling, legalized gambling, which was off the wall. That was a very difficult time because uh, John McMullen, who was the publisher of the Herald, yeah. played golf with um, Bud Purdy, and my mayor and a couple of commissioners were very close to him, and I had only been on the job now for about a year as county manager. That was a very, very difficult decision. But it was the right decision because I don't think the police department at that time reflected the community that it served. Um, there was very little minority representation. Um, the highest ranking African American in the department of 2,500 sworn was a lieutenant. And he had gone to the FBI Academy and was on the eligible register to be promoted to captain. And Purdy promised me that. I couldn't appoint, the director did. But he made, I, I told him what I wanted. He made a commitment to me that he would promote uh, to a captain, this very competent officer. Well, there was a lawsuit and the Progressive Officers Association, which was the black, was black officers in the department, uh, sued the county for discrimination. And the lieutenant put his name as the highest ranking on that lawsuit, and that put him on Purdy's list, and he didn't promote him. There were many other reasons that I had. And I brought in Bobby Jones, who transformed the Metro Police Department into a professional, sensitive uh, department that was looked upon in this country as one of the finest uh, that you would find. And, and I'm very proud of that. That's kind of an unsung activity. But Bobby and I and a lot of other people, we changed that department. Uh, I could give you a long list of the changes, but it was significant. Um, you asked me what the toughest decision. I had a lot of tough decisions. I'm sure uh, you did. But that was a, that was a tough but one. Put myself at risk when I did it. At yes. the time you were proved right, people saw that you were correct to fire him? In the long, yeah, in the long run. Time. Yeah, well, I had, I had pretty good community support, and, and the rank and file in the department were not happy with him either. Absolutely. He had a management style that was the antithesis of mine. He would balkanize the department. If somebody came up with a creative idea, he would say, write me a 20-page mm -hmm. position paper on it and discourage you. You're, you're familiar with what I'm saying? Uh, not personally, but... You understand, I understand what I'm saying. What you're saying. And, and so it discouraged creativity on the part of, you know, individual officers or command personnel within the department. And um, that was one of the reasons that I told him that I wanted to change. His management style was the antithesis, the opposite of mine. And uh, that's enough said for that. Uh, more questions? Any more, please? Feel free. Go ahead. I wonder if, speaking of corruption, yes. how much back, in your opinion and experience, does that go back to? Was it a certain people influence at a certain time, or was it always? Why is Miami known for that so much still now? Why is it your opinion? Well, 
I think politics has gotten tougher, in my opinion, this election. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ugliest Senior election I've ever one seen. Another, I mean, uh, if, if anybody, if people aren't turned off by this election, I, I they have no sensitivity, in my judgment. Um, instead of talking about issues, it was just attack, attack, exactly. attack, and smear and slam and do whatever you had to do. And, uh, uh, have you noticed? I, that, I'm sorry. Have you noticed that the campaigns are getting dirtier and nastier oh, over the years? Absolutely. We never used to have that. No, no. I mean, you know, you get some slugging matches and so forth. Issues are not even mentioned. No, yeah, no, I, I was going to share with you another experience. Um, when I became county administrator in Pinellas County, and I said I wouldn't touch that job with a ten-foot pole, I was quoted in the St. Pete Times, I have the quote, because they were going through county administrators like a meat grinder. The average tenure of a county administrator in Pinellas County was 1.4 years. I mean, you know, you hardly know where all the bathrooms are and everything else. Uh, it just was really a shame. Uh, but at the end of the day, I was approached by, individually, by the five commissioners, the last one being the chairman. And I did take the job. I took it on a, with a three-year contract. Um, and the St. Pete Times was doing a, an expose on zoning. And they were tearing the county apart on zoning decisions. Um, the commissioners were swearing up and down that they were honest and innocent and so forth and so on. And I'm trying to turn the image of this county around to make it positive. Uh, and I'm arguing a little bit with the St. Pete Times, you know, if there's fire where the smoke is, fine, let's see the fire. But boy, just hammering away is really debilitating. I was wrong. Uh, county commissioner by the name of George Brumfield, who was a city commissioner who was hired in 1967 as city manager, moved over to the courthouse. He. Uh, I won't go into details, let's just say that he tried to bribe a major developer for a project that we had done the site planning for, environmental, and so forth, 752 acres in the north end of Pinellas County. And he threatened the guy that he could hold up the approval of the site plan. And when you invest that kind of money in infrastructure and so forth, the front end load is terrific. And uh, he, he tried to bribe the guy for $10,000. The guy went to the state's attorney, God bless him, and uh, they put a wire on Brumfield, and three out of the five commissioners that hired him were convicted and sent to jail for zoning payoffs. So, so I only had two that hired me, and then the governor appointed some very fine people, and we were able to make progress then. I, when I went back to the county the second time in 1998, I went back to what the mayor called a scandal-ridden government. I later learned that his main lobbyists were telling him, this is Alex Pinellas, that if he didn't clean up the government, he wouldn't get reelected. And they recommended that he get me. I have a reputation for being clean and being aggressive against corruption. When I went back in 98, the Public Safety Department, under uh, our mayor now, uh, I don't want to talk about the recall effort to yeah. try to get some votes yeah. against it here. Um, uh, Carlos Alvarez, who is a man of integrity, we can disagree on whether he's been a strong mayor or not. I don't think he's been as strong as he should have been, but that's neither here nor there. There were six part-time detectives in the public corruption unit. Within a year, there were 40 of our finest detectives in public corruption, plus, plus eight paraprofessionals in support. Within a year, we tripled the Inspector General's budget 
within a year, I recommended and we hired 15 additional auditors in the internal audit department. So there's a three-pronged effort. And my instructions to the public corruption unit was where there's smoke, go get it. My instructions, and I don't care if it's the commission, who it was, uh, my instructions to Carlos Alvarez, the police chief, was they got to go through me to get to you. He's my appointment. And he was my chief. And so before they could squeeze him, they'd have to squeeze me. So um, we also instituted ethics training. Every county employee went through a half a day of ethics training. I, I'm sure had a positive effect. Does that mean out of 30,000 employees that you're not going to have some bad apples? No. But you try to minimize, minimize those bad apples. What other questions? I, I must be tempted.